All right, so in the previous video, we've actually looked at how to exploit cross-site scripting, probably the easiest way to exploit cross-site scripting via script tags without actually having to escape anything, without actually having to not necessarily escape or maybe escape the quotes, but just plain old script alert, so script alert, whatever, script, that's probably the easiest way. And now let's learn how to protect against cross-site scripting. So, uh, permit a malicious attacker to execute arbitrary chunks of JavaScript when other users visit your site. XSS is the most common publicly reported security vulnerability and part of every hacker is this toolkit. So the prevalence is very common, the exploitability is easy in some circumstances, not easy in a lot of circumstances because there have been issues or reports with extremely interesting and complicated attack factors to actually exploit an XSS and the impact is harmful. So what could determine a hacker do when exploiting a, an XSS vulnerability? So they could spread worms on social media sites such as Facebook, Twitter and YouTube which have all been successfully attacked in this way. Now, session hijacking, malicious JavaScript may be sent to, may be able to send a session ID to a remote site under uh, the hacker's control, allowing the hacker to impersonate that user by hijacking a session in progress. Identity theft, or theft, identity theft. If the user enters confidential information such as credit cards number, into compromised websites, these details can be stolen using malicious uh, JavaScript if, of course, they are kept in the DOM. So, Control Shift I on this website. I'm not sure if uh, if Developer Tools has a good representation of the DOM. But for example, Firefox over here. If we look into it, it has a good representation of the DOM and whatever everything is in the DOM. So everything that's in the DOM can be accessed via JavaScript most of the times. And in this situation, if such sensitive information is kept in the DOM, that can actually be accessed and sent over via cross-site scripting to a remote attack. Denial of service and website vandalism, theft of sensitive data, financial fraud, protection. Any dynamic content coming from the data store cannot be used to inject JavaScript on a page. So escaping dynamic content. Stored XSS make use of improper treatment of dynamic content coming from a backend data store. The attacker abuses an editable field by inserting some JavaScript code which is evaluated in the browser when another user visits that page. This is the case for stored XSS. Stored XSS is being stored wherever the information or whatever the input is stored, whether it be it in a database or in an object or whatever. Uh, and then it's actually being um, evaluated in the browser when another user visits that page. So unless your site is a content management system CNN, CMS, it is rare that you want you want your users to author raw HTML. Instead, you should escape all dynamic content coming from a data store so the browser knows it is treated as content of HTML tags as opposed to raw HTML. So escaping dynamic content consists of replacing significant characters with their HTML entity. So you have, in this situation, double quotes. You have uh, this sign, which is shift three on the keyboard. You have the ampersand, you have the single quote, you have the parentheses, and of course you have the open closing uh, brackets, or what are they called? What are these called? Whatever. Semicolon, forward slash, they should be escaped. Like, and as I said in the previous video, most modern uh, web frameworks will escape dynamic content by default. And we will see that in these code samples. 
Now, escaping editable content this way means it will never be treated as executable code. Thus, in this situation, you are actually closing a little bit of the door on most common XSS. Now, whitelist values. Whitelist values, or in this situation, you could also use regex. If a particularly if or if a particular dynamic data, so let's see how we are on time, five minutes, can only take a handful of valid values. The best practice is to restrict the values by having a whitelist. So render your logic only to permit only good known values. For instance, instead of asking a user to type in their country of residence, have them select from a drop down list. And also make sure that they aren't able to temper that on the back end by actually using a web proxy and modifying that uh, so they make sure they aren't able to bypass browser restrictions by using a web proxy implement a content security policy this is really important and also user types or what are they called uh, these new types by Google I believe it's user types or some sort of types. Modern browsers uh, support CSPs and CSP is an entire course in of itself that allows the author of a web page to control where JavaScript can be loaded and executed from. XSS attacks rely on the attacker being able to run malicious code scripts on a user web page either by injecting inline script tag somewhere within the HTML tag of a page or by tricking the browser into loading the JavaScript. So if you have a uh, content security policy such as this one script self and also this one, this actually tells the browser that it only loads script from itself for, or from let's say you're talking about hexplaining.com, www.hexplaining.com, it only accepts Secure, uh, it only accepts scripts loading from www.hexplaining.com and apis.google.com. The content security policy can also be set in a meta tag in the head, of course, which is really useful. This approach will uh, protect your users very effectively, and I agree with that. To migrate away from inline scripts, consider making use of CSP violations by actually having a report URI. Of course, so if you have a report URI in your policy header, the browser will notify you of any policy violations. So if someone tries to violate the, your content security policy, so if a user on breadit.com actually tries to inject a comment with a malicious script coming from other than self then automatically you will have a report URI in the format of a JSON you will have a post you will have an automatic post request to this report URI when your content security policy is violated such as that that uh, post request is going to it's going to hold a lot of details about how and who and where exactly uh, the uh, CSP has been violated. So this will give you reassurance that there are no lingering inline scripts before you ban them outright. Sanitize HTML. So make sure if you're a penetration tester in the responses, make sure you're looking for the content security policy not only report only but content security policy because as i said in a previous tweet this is a treasure trove of information sanitize html so some websites have a legitimate need to store and render raw html especially now that the content editable has become part of the html standard so if your site stores and renders rich content you need to use html sanitization library a html a sanitization library to ensure malicious users cannot inject scripts now preventing xss code samples let's see good and bad practices so for django this is a good practice for templates in django to actually render XSS proof content. Now you can override this escape by using the safe filter if you feel 
there is a specific reason to do so. Note that HTML escaping can also be turned on and off with the auto escape tag. Ruby, this is for Ruby, you have contents. You can override by escaping the raw function in this situation or by using the percent equals equals operator so <laughs> make sure there's a fine line between safe and not safe in Ruby and that fine line is defined by an equal or a raw but the equal here so if you're a penetration tester and if you're actually doing some security code review make sure you check this out if you're doing secure code review on a ruby powered website this is for java you can use the cout tag to safely escape html in this situation so in this other situation you're actually doing it without escaping the HTML. Better use a third-party library if you need to escape HTML and in this situation string escape utils escape HTML you've got all the documentation over there. C sharp node node it's actually pretty so for mustache JS the fine line is a curly bracket. Dust.js is similar to the Python Django, of course. Instead of the safe, they only have the S. None checks, safe, unsafe, safe. PHP. The echo command does not escape HTML by default, which means that any code like the following, which puts, uh, which pulls data directly out of the HTTP request, is vulnerable to XSS attacks. Be sure to use strip tags function or the HTML special char chars function uh, to safely escape parameters. So in this situation, this is a safer approach. Now you have Angular JS in which you're actually using uh, curly brackets, double curly brackets but be wary of any code that binds dynamic content to the inner HTML attributes since that will not be escaped automatically so in a situation like this in, in, in uh, Angular you would not be safe. Now React of course automatically uh, be escaping unsafe content but it allows you to actually use the dangerously set HTML property which is actually named to remind you of the security risk. Now other considerations as we've seen um, in the attack video so HTTP only cookie our example shows how a session hijacking attack can use malicious JavaScript to steal the cookie containing the user's session ID. There is a rare good reason to read or manipulate cookies in client uh, side JavaScript, so consider marking cookies as HTTP only. So if you're a penetration tester, for example, do look for HTTP only uh, for the HTTP only flag in the cookies in the responses of uh, the stuff that you're actually testing out. So let's actually, for example, if we look into this with Control Shift I, let's see if we have a cookie in this situation. Let's look at the network for example and maybe click refresh here and then actually look at what we have here. So XSS stored. We look at the cookies expires HTTP only is for example just in 
this session ID. So the HTTP only flag is set only in the session ID for hexplaining.com. Let's actually view them better. You also have the secure and also the same site, same party, partition key and priority. And of course, if there are other uh, tags in the cookies, they will appear in there. So, if you set the HTTP only, that means that cookies will be received, stored and sent by the browser, but cannot be modified or read by a JavaScript. So in this situation, let's go back in here and let's go into the console. Let's look at document.cookie. It's undefined. I wonder why. Because we are in this window we have the cookies and of course it cannot be read but if you if you check the document dot location for example it actually tells you the location now again document dot cookie it actually it's going to give you the cookie but it's not going to give you this so where were we in the console it's it's only going to give you the GA the we love GID and GAT but remember so this is one two three four cookies but if we go and look into the number of cookies that were for the XSS stored there was also the session ID and the session ID isn't transmitted in the console so you have the GA which is over there you have the we love cookies which is set to one you have the GID and there's another one GAT but you don't have the session ID cookie because as explained here cookies will be received stored and sent by the browser but cannot be modified or read by javascript such as the javascript engine in the browser now let's actually test ourselves this was a pretty long video so how can you prevent xss attacks as the user to disable javascript in their browser of course so that's that's probably the best way to do it Escape dynamic content when it is written out in HTML. So this might be interesting. Whitelist permitted values for dynamic fields. This could be one of the answers or escape dynamic content when it is written out in HTML. So this is a little bit confusing because you want to escape content when it's written out but you can also whitelist permitted values for dynamic fields if you have a restricted list of values so I'm not really sure I'm actually going to go with with which I think I'm going to go with whitelist permitted values if an attacker manages to store malicious JavaScript in your database what could they do? Well, redirect other users to malicious uh, websites, hijack other users' a session, deface your website, drop important tables in your database. So, if they are able to store malicious JavaScript in your database, they could hijack other users' a session. Let's see. So yeah, interesting. Both of them were correct. And with that, we've finished the cross-site scripting. Next, we're actually going to go into command injection. Really excited about that.